Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. On this one, we're talking about how to pimp your QuickBooks file. I was working with a client not too long ago, teaching her how to use QuickBooks. She had no experience with it prior to working with me. And after I had walked her through a few sessions on some of the basics of QuickBooks, I said to her that, you know, we can customize your icon bar to have it represent the things that you do quickly so you don't have to navigate through all the menus. And a lot of people know how to do this. It's, you know, this is not rocket science, but uh, for the sake of those who don't, I thought I'd show you. And because she was so excited about it. So it made me realize there might be other people who might get excited once they see that they can do this and how easy it is to customize QuickBooks to make it work uh, for you. So what I w want to do is show you how I do this. Uh, and and by the way, the client referred to it when I did it for her as pimping out her QuickBooks. You know, and she sent me an email thanking me for pimping out her QuickBooks, which I thought was pretty funny. So I'm using it. I'm taking her phrase, and we're going to pimp QuickBooks. So one of the things I like to do, uh, as with any artiste, is I like to start with a clean canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click anywhere on this icon bar and choose Customize Icon Bar. I'm going to start at the very bottom, and I'm just going to delete everything. And we're going to start from scratch. I'm going to leave the home button there, and let's also add in the backup data. And by the way, if you do this up to this point so far, and realize, oh no, I want all those buttons back on there, just click cancel, because it hasn't saved these changes yet. So click cancel, everything will reappear. Uh, but now we're ready to start adding some things in. So I'm going to click OK. Once you click OK, you no longer, you can't, you can't undo on this. So you're stuck at this point recreating the picture. Now when I do this, I like to think in terms of the things I do uh, in, in kind of a logical way. So let's add a separator here. And in a, by in a logical way, I mean the things I do and in, in, in the order in which I do them. So for example, I might want to enter a bill and then I might want to pay a bill. Right? So first I'm going to enter a bill, then I'm going to pay a bill. So let's put them up in the icon bar in that order. So whatever screen I have live here, when I choose view, QuickBooks will let me add that item to the icon bar. And in many cases, like with entering bills, it's got a default icon that it will want to use for that. So we got that in there. Then we do the pay bills. So let's add pay bills to the icon bar. This one we don't really have uh, a good default one. So we can just pick anything that you know we feel sort of fits. And uh, there's one here that I kind of like to use. Sometimes it takes me a minute to find it. I thought it was more towards the top here. We can do that one. That one will work. So we pay the bills. Now, after I've entered and paid bills, I also may need to write some checks so we can add that one in. Okay, and that pretty much takes care of your sort of cash outflows for now. So let's add a separator. And now... What else do we want to do? We want to invoice customers. Hopefully we're going to be doing a lot of that in our business. So we can add that one in. And then after we've invoiced the customer, there's a good chance that we're going to want to receive payments. So let's add receive payments. Now this one, we need a good money icon, right? There it is. We're going to get money. After I receive payments, then I'm going to want to make deposits. And there's one I love to use for this, which is a little vault there. So that's how we get money. First, we've, we've paid our people. You know, you almost might think before we do that, we need to get money. So you might want to put that first. But to me, uh, it doesn't really make a difference which order you put them in, as long as they're grouped in a way that's sort of logical. And the real important thing is that you know where to go to find it when you need it. So you should group this in a way that's logical to you. You might think, I'm an idiot the way I grouped them. You might have a much better way. The other thing I like to have up here is all the centers, the vendor centers. So we'll add that one in. And the customer center. We'll add that one in. And, of course, if you have employees and you want to add the employee center in there, Let's close those up. Let me add in another separator. And then the other thing I love to have up here are some of the company-specific things, like the company snapshot. This is a great tool, by the way. If you haven't gotten accustomed to it, get accustomed to it. Every time I show this to the clients that I work with, they love it. They can't believe that they hadn't spent time on it before. You've got your company, your payment snapshot, and your customer snapshot, which is new in QuickBooks 2011. So if you haven't already, upgrade to QuickBooks 2011. If you're on Nerd's blog watching this, or wherever you are, if you go to Nerd's blog, nerdenterprises.com forward slash blog, 
click the QuickBooks box at the top left, and that'll take you into the Intuit world where you can buy any Intuit products and get the uh, ProAdvisor discount uh, through my affiliate program. Now, in addition to this, one thing that I personally love to have is the Memorize Reports list. And where to go? Add Memorize Reports list. There's one of these icons that looks like a piece of recycled loose leaf paper that I always like to use for this. You got to have fun with these things. If you don't have fun with these things, then it's no fun. So have fun with these things. Make it fun. That's, that's what I like to do. I make QuickBooks fun for people. Now, once you've filled up this whole icon bar, or for that matter, if there are some other things that you want quick access to that you don't necessarily want up here, you've got your favorites menu. And I have, haven't noticed a lot of people paying attention to this, even in the write-ups that I've read on QuickBooks. I haven't seen many people even really mention this. And it's one of those things that's just kind of there, and I think you don't even notice it unless somebody calls your attention to it. So I'm calling your attention to this. Go to your favorites and you can add via menu item <coughs> to your favorites. These are things that you do often. So if you want to be able to get your class list up there, add that. So now the next time you want your class list, you just go to favorites and it's right there. Anything else that you want to add, you just go to favorites, customize favorites, and it's in order by menu item. It starts with lists. Uh, there's your accountant menu, which you're only seeing because I use the accountant's copy. Here's your company menu. So, and you can, as you can see, you can add anything in here. Uh, planning and budgeting might be a good thing to uh, to add in there. Set up budgets. I like to do that in Excel personally, but maybe you like to use this. Uh, you can. They have a business plan tool now in QuickBooks that you can use. So you can, once you've pimped out your icon bar, then you can pimp out your favorites a little bit. So the whole thing is, and I always talk about this, and, and you know, when I do what screencasts on things like Evernote and other productivity schools uh, tools that aren't necessarily financial software, but they have to do with saving time, which means productivity, which in business means, as we all know time is money so anything I can do to save time is going to help me become more efficient which is going to save me money it's going to help me become more profitable as a business and that's frankly what I'm concerned with when it comes to any of any kind of software tutorial or training that I do with clients is it's all about getting to things quickly that I need to get to on a, on a frequent basis I don't want to spend more than 30 seconds looking for anything so I want this icon bar pimped out so that it's got the things I use frequently yours may look very different from this because there's there may be things that you like to use frequently, and you may not care about this stuff. And a lot of us, as, as you might have noticed, I didn't really use my mouse to bring up a lot of these screens. I hardly ever use even the icon bar because I've got the keyboard shortcuts memorized because I do the things so often. So the other thing you can do is if there's a particular report you like, you might want to stick your profit and loss up there. Just the default this fiscal year to date. Once you've got that report up, you can add that. Add the profit and loss to the icon bar. There's one that's like a big dollar sign. There it is. That way you can see how much money you're making. Um, and while you're at it, if you're going to add this, you should probably add the balance sheet in there because if you're not, you should get in the habit of looking at that one too. And if you really want to get into it, the statement of cash flows is really the most important one, but that's a whole different webcast that I'll do another time. So that's pretty much what I've got for you on how to pimp your QuickBooks. Go through this and add in the things that you like to use most often so that QuickBooks is going to work as efficiently and productively as it possibly can for you. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.